I'm Terry Nichols. I, um, some of you might remember me from the whirlwind that is orientation training, but I work for the Montana Watershed Coordination Council, which is part of the, the partnership that runs the Big Sky Watershed Core program. I work a little bit more on the host site end of things, more so than the member end of things. And today we're going to talk about these Big Sky Watershed Core cost share grants that you all have through NWCC. Um, and you probably, none of you knew you had, you were going to have to manage a grant right when you came on board. Um, hopefully, you know by now, hopefully you got those emails from me and have talked to your supervisor about it just a little bit. Oh, we've got, Tracy's going to join us. And so this webinar is just how to deal with all of that stuff. Um, so we're going to go step by step through everything. I'll, I've got a little um, screen share that I'll do. And first, I want to thank Jess Olson and Tess Parker for being here. Um, they are Big Sky Watershed Corps alums who had to work with this grant. Jess also is now um, has worked on one of these grants as a host site supervisor, or maybe two last year. Trying to anyway, just okay. This year is your first one. <laughs> But anyway, Jess is now seeing it from both sides. Um, and so I just want to give them an opportunity to introduce themselves and then uh, we'll have everyone else introduce themselves. Um, Jess, you want to go first? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Jess. I'm with the Gallatin Diverse Task Force. Um, I'm currently the conservation manager um, on the supervisor side of this grant, but I did the Watershed Corps program in 2021 um, where I was in all of your position. Hey everybody, I'm Tess. I work at the Gallatin Watershed Council as a project manager and I was a core member last year. And yeah, I remember going through all of this. So really excited that Trace or Terry that puts this on to help everyone out. Yeah. And hopefully it gets a little better every year. And and yeah, I really appreciate Tess and Jess both being on here. So there'll be there's some specific questions for them at the end, but they'll just be available, be available to, as I think I told you earlier, feel free to chime in if you're like, oh Terry mentioned this too. This is you know pretty casual. So um they'll be a great resource here. They just see things from a different perspective than I do, having managed these grants. And now we'll just go to the members and we've got some host site supervisors on too, which is great to see. So we'll just go around just state your name. Um, if you want to uh, also state your pronouns, if they're not already in your Zoom name, and then also what host site you're serving with, and what is the most interesting thing that you've learned in your term so far? I think you've all been, we've, most of us have been here for a month now. So uh, we'll just go on my screen. Tim, can you go first? Hi, um, I'm Tim. I'm serving with the Ruby Valley Conservation District in Sheridan. Um, is that all you wanted or? Oh, and what's the most interesting thing you've learned so far in your term? Oh, um, I'd say I've, I've been learning a lot about like the low tech restoration stuff, like beaver dam analogs, stuff like that. That's been really interesting to learn about. Cool, cool. Okay, well, Daniel next. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm uh, serving with Green Mountain Conservation District in the Lower Clark Fork Watershed Group. And so far, the most interesting thing I've been reading is um, kind of uh, riparian revegetation techniques. So, great. Emily? Hi, I'm Emily. I'm serving with uh, Stormwater with City of Missoula with Tracy. And I am. Um, was I was shocked to learn about the amount of dry wells that we have here in Missoula. There's over 7,000. So it's kind of crazy. Cool. Um, Jess, we've already got you. Allie? Hi, everyone. My name's Allie. I'm serving with the Gallatin River Task Force. I'm working with Jess. I feel like I've learned a lot already, but I think one of the interesting things is like the complexity of big sky and water management and kind of like the un in unincorporated community. So it's been really interesting. Cool, great. And Naya. Hi, I'm Naya. I'm serving with the Yak Valley Forest Council up in Northwest Montana. Um, the most interesting thing I've learned, I think honestly, just like learning all about the organization and the really cool stuff that they do. Um, and I'm still learning a lot, but it's just been fun to get involved. Great. Tracy, thanks for joining us as a supervisor. 
All right, Tracy Campbell. I am the stormwater utility superintendent at the city of Missoula, and we are a host site. And Susan? Uh, I'm Susan Drumheller. I'm a grant writer uh, with the Clark Fork Project um, in the Lower Clark Fork Watershed, and I'm going to be working with um, GMCD, and, uh, you know, I just want to help out with some of the grant reporting and stuff if needed. So I just want to be more familiar with the, the project. Great, great. Yeah. And Susan, you're with, yeah, GMCD is the Green Mountain Conservation District. So yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just for, for those who might not know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and so Susan is working with Daniel um, on this and has stepped in. They've had a little bit of a staffing transition. So appreciate you being on here with that too. And yeah, then, my pleasure. Yeah. And then Katie. Hi, I'm Katie lynch Dombrowski. Um, I serve with Flathead Basin Commission and City of Kalispell in Kalispell. And the uh, most interesting thing is how rain gardens filter stormwater pollutants. Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. And I'm gonna start up the little presentation I've gotten. I think I figured this out how to do this and still show presentation notes. Uh, but let me know if this works out or not, or not show my presentation notes and let me know if this works out. Maybe. <laughs> I think you are seeing my notes, but I'm going to move them. Maybe. Nope. Yeah, you can all see my presentation notes right now, I'm guessing. Yeah, okay. Hold on. Move this. There we go. Okay, now can you see the slides without the notes? Great, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess before we get started, Katie, do you have, I, I was a little, do you have this funding with Flathead Basin Commission? Um, I believe I do qualify. Oh, you might, see, I think I, yeah. So before you, I, I just, when you signed on, I thought maybe I missed somebody, but you don't, so we're going to have some project support funding coming up that'll be announced uh -huh. week that you can apply for and everyone on this call can apply for. But this is cost share funding. And this is a grant that people already had coming in that their host sites applied for. Oh, oh, and so you okay. don't, so you threw me for a loop for a bit and I was like, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but no, you don't have this funding. So, oh, okay. So I don't know if I accidentally sent you the email or what. I apologize. If oh, you they that. sent it on like the Google calendar for everyone. So I thought this was for like the funding that you apply for, for like future trainings. Got it, got it, got it. No, sorry, I'm glad I said something. <laughs> so you didn't yeah. Well. yeah, that we will be having a webinar on that project support funding for like non-point source projects um, coming up next month sometime. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And I'll send that to everybody. Um, okay. This one you don't actually have to be on. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Bye. Good to see you though. Okay, great. I'm glad I, I wasn't sure, but I'm glad I said something. So um, just a quick question. Did everybody, let me see if I can make it so I can see everyone, but how many of you um, actually had a chance to look through those Word documents that I sent with the, the reporting form questions and everything? It's okay if you didn't. It's a <laughs> okay. Um, for those of you who looked through them, it just kind of show of hands or thumbs up. Like how many of you were like, Oh, this totally makes sense. This is going to be a piece of cake. Ooh, Allie, okay. And how many were like, this is a lot of words. This is kind of confusing. I need more information. Or maybe somewhere in between. Anyway. Um, yeah, just so you know, as you know, as this title slideshow is like, we're in this together. Oh, I was also going to ask who's ever managed a grant before. 
anyone? Anyone ever managed a grant before? Okay. Uh, yeah, I've managed a grant. Oh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's, probably Tracy has too. Uh, maybe maybe Tess and Jess. Yeah, yeah, for sure the host site supervisors have. But as far as the members go, um, we sort of assume that this is your first grant ever. Um, and we try to teach it, treat it as such. Like we tr try to like give as much support as possible, including this webinar. Um, this is the only, I don't do grant or I don't do webinars for other funding that MWCC has, but this is just, to let you know that in addition to this webinar, you can feel free to ask questions, um, reach out, you know, if you're ever confused on anything. Hopefully that FAQ document that I sent out will help. And also I will be after this webinar sending you some other resources as well, including some of the um, examples of good grant reporting that I'll show in this webinar. So just to know that if you did look at those documents and like, oh my gosh, this is a lot, I don't understand what's going on, that's totally fine. I think that's pretty much how everybody feels at the beginning and how I felt when I first started managing grants. So um, just to walk you through what we're gonna talk about, we've already done the introductions. I'm gonna to explain to you what this grant actually is um, and how it became that you got roped into this grant reporting thing when you didn't even apply for it. I'm gonna do an overview of the actual reporting, what you'll need to know and what you'll be filling out in those reporting forms, how to get into your reporting forms if you haven't already done that in submittable, what this match word is. I don't know if you've heard this thrown around yet, but it's sort of the, the money that, that goes toward like MWCC has given your host site a certain amount of money and then you have to match that with other cash or in kind, we'll get into all of that. Tracking, 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 the most important thing about this, how to keep track of things right from the get-go, right from today, so that you're not crying when you have to do your reporting. And then we'll leave plenty of time for questions um, and for Jess and Tess to chime in as well. Again, this is fairly informal. If you have any kind of clarifying questions, feel free to unmute or, or throw it in the chat or raise your hand. Um, if you have sort of bigger overarching questions, you might want to save those for the end because maybe we'll get to them before that. Any questions just right at the get-go before we start out? Okay. So first of all, what is this grant, right? So this funding, this is a little confusing, but this funding from comes from Section 319 of the Federal Clean Water Act, which hopefully you've all heard of, um, administrated by administered by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. And the EPA sends this funding to all the states and I think territories as well. And it's usually the State Department of Environmental Quality or a similar agency that then distributes it within the state. And then MWCC applied for these funds to the Montana Department of Environmental Quality. They're called, that's why we call them 319 funds. So if you apply for funding directly to DEQ, it's a 319 grant. We got that funding and then we're now passing that along to your host site. So MWCC, we're a nonprofit, um, like a lot of the organizations you all are working for, but these are federal funds. So that's just something that'll be important down the road when we talk about the match and all kinds of things. But this is, these are originally federal funds that MWCC is just putting out there. And we try to, with the watershed fund, make it easier for people to access these federal funds because you probably don't want to apply for a 319 grant as your first grant. The purpose of this, these grants through the MWCC watershed fund is to provide local organizations like your host site with the capacity to reduce non-point source pollution in your watersheds, right? Like keep keep non-point source pollutants out of the creeks and rivers and lakes. And also to do that through these DEQ accepted WRPs, which are watershed restoration plans. You'll see that, I'll throw that around a lot, WRPs. But it's basically a plan that your community, often some of your watershed groups and other organizations in your community came together and said, okay, what are, with DEQ, which is why it's CEQ accepted, they all came together and said, okay, here are the pollution problems in our local waterways, which waterways are most impacted, what do we need to do to improve water quality and wildlife habitat, aquatic wildlife habitat in our watershed. And they came up with this plan that has a whole bunch of details of how to do that. So basically what all of you are doing under this grant is helping to reduce and prevent non-point source pollution 
according to the steps and the, the actions in these watershed restoration plans. So that's essentially what we're funding. But also, and the, the bigger picture is we're hoping to build your host site organization's capacity to do more of this work by hiring you all <laughs> to help them with it. And also helping with your professional development, right? Building the next generation of conservation leaders. So this is not just about your host site and getting this work done. It's also about helping you learn how to manage a grant and helping you to be able to do more work in this area and then have been able to if your host site hadn't had this fund. So those are the three things and it's important to keep all that in mind because when you get to your reporting, especially the sort of additional questions at the end of the forms, a lot of them are related to this. So, you know, just be thinking about these things if this funding is actually helping you do that. For reporting, so do have any of you not seen your host the funding memorandum of understanding or the funding agreement? that your host site has for this? Anybody not seen that yet of the members? Okay, that's great. Um, I'm still gonna show you where to find it <laughs> just in case you need it again. But just briefly, um, your first interim report is gonna be due May 19th. Your final reports are gonna be November 6th. And I will get into, I'll go back to this, but for right now, I'm gonna switch over to um, Gallatin River Task Force kindly allowed me to log into their submittable account. So this is what it's gonna look like. Oops, I have to go back on that. Back on this. So you can't quite see because my little bar is in here, but there should be at the, at the top of your submittable account when you log in. Oh, there we go, there it goes. Um, submissions. And so that's the section that you're going to be under. Sometimes if you're not, if it doesn't look like this, you can go to um, your little login and it'll say submissions down here if you're not already there. But basically you're going to be in submissions. That's all you basically need to know in here. And the actually the first place I'm going to point you to is the messages tab. And that's where you can actually see all the back and forth between me and your host site supervisor about anything to do with this grant. Most of it doesn't matter, but the main thing is to scroll down to the first, you can see um, attachments pretty easily. So scroll down to the attachment that says cost share funding MOU, and then you'll see this PDF that you can click on. So you can always find it there under messages. It might be a little further down depending on how much messaging we do, but it'll always be there. I've already downloaded that. And so I'm gonna go over to that for Gallatin River Task Force. And again, hopefully this looks familiar to everybody. Hopefully this is just an overview, but it's sort of the background, talks more about the purpose of this grant. And then a couple things on the agreement, I just wanna point out, this is, this is basically more or less everything you need to know about what you have to do for this grant. Um, the, it says you've been awarded 6,000. I think all of your host sites received $6,000 this year. Sometimes it's a different amount, but I think everyone has $6,000. You have to document this 100% non-federal match, which means you have to have another $6,000 in other funding, which we'll talk about. It has the dates that your interim and final reports are due in bold. So if you ever forget and don't put it on your calendar, it's right here. Um, it also talks a little bit about the guidelines um, a few other details in here. And then one thing that's underlined, and this is part of what I'll send you after this webinar, is that whenever you, you know, if you're making a sign for something, if you're, if you're, um, doing a blog post or a social media post, wherever possible, you should be mentioning any of your partners. I mean, if you're working with FWP, like anybody you kind of want to thank for helping you out on this project or this program or this, this workshop, um, one of the, three of the partners, and I apologize, there were a lot of words for all of us, but I will send you the logos. But you wanna also be acknowledging the MWCC Watershed Fund, the Montana Department of Environmental Quality and the US EPA, because we're the ones who provided this funding, right? And you don't have to do that on every social, you know, it's just, you don't have to do it on every social media post. You know, maybe Tess and Jess will have an idea for how to manage that. But, you know, pretty much anywhere you're talking about a big event that you're doing through this funding, just be acknowledging, especially if you make um, a flyer sign or something like that especially and I'll send you those logos but just to remember that because a lot of people forget which is not the end of the world but just to try to um, remind people about that this is the legal stuff and then at the bottom you'll get to your scope of work 
And this is individual, that part at the top is the same for all of you, but this scope of work is different for everybody. So this is just, um, Allie is lucky because we are looking at her, <laughs> her work plan specifically, but this is what you will be reporting on. And I sent each of you a spreadsheet that has the same information in it too. So hopefully you can fill things out. Um, it lists the percentage, it lists every task, the percentage of your time you're gonna be spending on this. This is an estimate. I don't ask you to report on this, you don't need to. It's just sort of like more or less, how much of my time should I be spending on this? What you will be reporting on are all the activities, the deliverables, which are sort of the like concrete, numberable, tangible things that will come out of your activities and then your match. And then you'll see there's a, I think all of you have at least two tasks. Some of you have up to five, five is the most that you have. And so this, I'm gonna go back over to the reporting forms now, but you will literally just cut and paste, I'm gonna do this right now, into your reporting form. If I can get back to that. There we go. So anyway, any questions so far? Okay, so now we're back in submittable. Um, and you're going to go to forms. Just a note, I'm not gonna open this one, but this one at the top is always gonna be the original grant proposal that your host site supervisor. Oh, Jess, did you have something? I We can't see your screen anymore. Oh. If you're oh. <laughs> okay, let me reshare. I don't know what I did, thanks. Okay, are we back? So these, this is the forms tab now. And I'm not gonna look at this one. This is, I was just saying, this is the original grant proposal that your host site supervisor submitted. Don't look at this, it will only be confusing because very often the original grant proposal will say, oh, actually we can't fund that thing that you wanted to do, but we could fund this instead or let, you know, so often there are changes made look at your MOU, that's where kind of the final word is. But just so you know what this is, this is the original. If you wanna look at their original proposal, um, just don't use this as your reference. And then you'll see your interim and final reporting. And so I'm gonna go into the interim. And you've got reporting form instructions, which are exactly the same as in that Word doc that I sent you. So we'll scroll past all that, the additional questions that'll be in your final form. Pretty straightforward at the beginning. And then we get to those exact same tasks that are in your scope of work. So you're gonna have the title and literally just cut and paste. What is the title in your, the scope of work in your MOU? And what is the description of your member activities? And this is where it gets complicated. And I tried to be as detailed as possible in here. I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but basically what you're gonna do is cut and paste from your MOU, which will still work. Great. Um, and if you can put spaces between, I would just make me so happy. It's not required. It's just so much easier to read. Um, and you don't have to have this whole thing. And in fact, I don't want you to have this whole thing. A shortened version is totally fine. So write this like plan and manage volunteer recruitment for the annual runoff clean. That, that's perfect. You don't need that second sentence. Just a short, like, you know, most of what you're doing for this activity. And then you're going to say, so you want a brief description of what you've accomplished. So this is your interim report. You might um, write um, still in the planning phases, you know, making this up. <laughs> um, flyers created and, you know, two volunteers recruited, right? That's where you're at. This hasn't happened yet. And then you're going to put, and you can do bullet. I think you can do, you know, if you want to do like bullets or something in here, that's great too. Um, if you can't, and then you'll just want to, the next thing is whether it's complete in progress or not begun. So this one is in progress. So that lets me know that you'll have more to report at the end. You know, if it was complete, you might have a few more sentences on exactly what you did to finish it. If it hasn't, if you haven't yet started on this activity, that's all you need to write. I don't need anything else. Just, okay, you haven't started. You're going to work on this in the second part of your term. I'm not going to go, I'm going to show you this in the example. Um, I'll say a little bit more later and I'll, Allie, I'll take this out of your form. 
so then <laughs> you can start over. Um, this, there's some more instructions that I'll get into when we look at an example of a good report. Same thing with your deliverables. You're gonna go back to your MOU, cut and paste from your deliverables. Oh, I think that's what happened last time, yeah. 15 new volunteers recruited, right? Let's say, you know, this is your interim report. So you're like five volunteers recruited. Um, if you, I, I, I guess I'll say this here because this doesn't show up in the examples. You know, sometimes in your tasks, like you, you have to get the, ta the tasks are what you're being funded for. The overall volunteer monitoring or education and outreach, whatever your overall task is, you basically have to get that done because that's what you're paying. We're paying us <laughs> your host site. If you're not going to, please talk to your host site supervisor and reach out to me. But sometimes your activities and your deliverables are going to change. That's just, you know, the way it is. You'll have a different activity. Um, and so if, if you're going to not have a deliverable or a task completed, if it's one, you know, if it's one or two, it's not a huge deal. But just put in, you know, in all caps somewhere that I can see it. You know, we're not going to be doing this. And then here's why. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit more when I show some reporting examples. And then match funding sources, we're not gonna get into this because we'll talk about that separately, but same thing, you can more or less cut and paste. Your match sources are probably gonna change possibly more than other things will change. Um, so you might not be doing as much cutting and pasting there, but that'll, be, that'll definitely be a thing you'll wanna talk to your host site supervisor about because they're gonna know more where your match is coming from, especially if it's cash match. Um, and then thing, again, task two, and then it's exactly the same for all the tasks. Um, again, if you only have two tasks, you only fill out two tasks. If you have more, you know, and then you just leave the rest blank, they're not required, so it won't kick you out or anything. And then you're gonna go down to concluding questions, which are pretty simple for your interim, it's just these two. And then you're gonna fill in your match. Um, which again, we'll get into that later. And then you go just to see, oops. So going back to forms, then you'll see your final report is exactly the same, except you're going to have these metric at the bottom, same reporting, but you'll it'll all be cumulative. You will report on everything, everything you reported in your interim, cut and paste, and then add to it for your final report. Um, but just to point out, there is this section on watershed fund metrics. I'm not gonna get into this today, but it's basically, these are kind of the four things that MWCC uses in a lot of our communications to say, this is what our funding has achieved on the ground. Um, there's pretty good explanations in here. Um, so. If you have questions on that, reach out to me, but it's a little, you know, it, it's relatively straightforward. It's just maybe things you're not used to reporting on. Um, and yeah, I just don't wanna spend too much time on it because I wanna make sure we have time for match and questions. And then you'll see that there are, again, other concluding questions, which are more related to the goals of this funding, which is how has your work helped with your own professional development? How has this work helped your host site's capacity? And there is, I think, just one question that says a question for your host site supervisor. And so they will just like just ask them to answer that question and you can put it in there. We will also ask you to upload any education and outreach materials, maps. They're different. These are all deliverables in your things. If there are specific projects you're going to produce a report or something, you want to upload that here. Um, but also kind of a sampling of your education. You know, if you if you wrote an article for the local paper, if you um, did a blog post, if you did a video, if you want to send us links to those things, those are fantastic. Um, just a sampling is fine. You don't need to include everything you do. A lot of you I know will be doing a lot of education and outreach. So just a good sampling and make sure that they're things that do directly relate to reducing and preventing non-point source pollution. All the other stuff we don't care about as much under this grant. We're also going to ask you to upload photos. We love photos of people actually doing things, getting out there in the creek or at a workshop doing something. Um, so just be thinking about all that, captions and credits, and then the same table for match, which we'll get into later. Questions so far? Okay. Ooh, whoa. 
<laughs> that that was touchy. <laughs> okay, so now we are going into match. So match funding is basically you've gotten the six thousand dollars from us, which again is federal funding, even though it comes from a nonprofit, and. We like, well, also DEQ, like most funders, like we want to know that we're not the only ones funding your work, right? That like other people are supporting your work. And so it's it's things that you, funding that you'll use to carry out your activities and your tasks in addition to this funding. And you're going to use those match sources in your scope of work as a guide um, again, if we just look at that really quickly, um, you know, for here, for, for Ali's thing, just estimated, you know, that these are the types of match that they would have, that they would have some, some match all in kind, um, which means, and anyway, going to get to that in a minute, but supplies that people have donated volunteer time, staff time, right? They're not expecting, they don't have another grant that's going to help pay for this task. It's all going to be in kind, which is things that you would normally have to pay for, but instead someone or an organization is donating them. So if those are exactly the same, you can cut and paste, but they will likely change. Yes. And yeah, basically talk with your host site supervisor about this one, especially. And all of your match is gonna come from non-federal sources which is why I have this crossed out, you're not going to have any federal match. It is possible that someone from the Forest Service or the Fish and Wildlife Service or another federal agency will help you with the project, will let you use some tools, will help you in all kinds of ways. And that's great. Any like You take help from anybody, but you're just not going to be able to count that as your match. So you want not, so any of these things that are on this are not going to be eligible for your match. And this includes, there are four grants that you may possibly get to your, during your term. Um, if your host site has an existing DEQ 319 grant like the, directly from DEQ, you can't use that as match because it's the same funding. This also comes from those 319 Clean Water Act funds. If you get an education and outreach mini grant from the Montana Association of sort of letting you know all the great grants, you'll hear more about this at your education and outreach training. These are all grants you might apply for during your term. Um, Montana Association of Conservation Districts, MACD, has an education and outreach mini grant. That also comes from these 319 funds. MACD has a Ranching for Rivers grant. That also comes from DEQ 319 funds. And MWCC is going to have some project support. Um, that's why Katie was on here <laughs> accidentally, because we're going to be announcing another grant for doing small projects related to non-point source pollution. And we'll be announcing that at the end of the week. Fingers crossed, definitely before your ENO training. So if you happen to apply for and receive that grant funding through MWCC, through the Watershed Fund, you also can't count that as much because they all come from the same source and they're all ultimately federal funds. So just a heads up on that. So what is non-federal match? Non-federal match is grants, donations, or any other contributions from pretty much anyone who's not a federal agency or a federal agency employee. Anyone <laughs> um, includes donations of time, equipment, materials, mileage, all those things. Hash match is pretty straightforward. It basically is your host site got a grant, you know, maybe from the part, maybe another state agency gave them a grant, maybe a foundation. Um, again, anybody who's not a federal agency could also be individual donations. You know, your organization has a fundraiser, you have a fundraiser as part of your, you know, your work. That counts, um, anything raised at a community event. And, and also some host sites will use general operating funds. We don't recommend that just because that's like dipping into what you need just to pay the bills and keep the lights on. But that happens sometimes too. It's basically any kind of cash that doesn't come from federal sources. Questions? I always feel like this is so much and I've been doing this for five years, so. <laughs> All right, and next, is non-federal in-kind match. And as Jess and Tess can probably attest to, the vast majority, if not all of your match, is probably gonna be in-kind. Um, the reason your host sites applied for this funding usually is like they don't have a lot of funding, right? And so they don't usually have a whole bunch of other grant funding. But the great thing about in-kind match is it is almost infinite. There's, I'm going to um, share with you all a link if you, if you want to, we had a, um, a short webinar a little while back 
um, Christine Brissett from Trout Unlimited went through like just all kinds of in-kind match. I mean, it's a great thing to, to check out. Um, but you know, it's, it's donations of anything you would normally have to pay for. And so people get really like sod, willow stakes, seeds, tools, somebody, somebody lets you bar, you know, commonly like, you know, somebody like MCC, even like MCC will often loan members tools to use that. How much would you have to pay for that tool or to rent that tool? Right. That counts as match. Um, if a neighboring landowner or the landowner who's place you're working on, you're planting willows and they're like, oh yeah, just cut some, cut some willows off of mine. You would have to pay for those willow stakes, right? If you weren't just able to, you know, harvest those for free. Um, mileage, if you have volunteers who are driving to an event, find out how far they drove, keep track of these things. Um, there's a state mileage rate, I think it's 0.585 right now, but your site will know that. Um, count that if, if an organization, you have a volunteer event or any workshop, any kind of event, and you have free food there, we can't pay for food through any of our grants, but maybe you have a local business that donates something that counts as match, all of that stuff. And then I kind of save the time for last. Um, cause that's actually probably the biggest one is, you know, your host site supervisor is probably going to work with you. Well, is hopefully going to work with you on all these things. Their time will count as match board. You know, you might have a board member who's helping you. Um, volunteers are usually a really big one. Think about, and this is more in that, um, webinar from Christine that I mentioned, but she talks, we talk a little bit about the rate. There is a, um, uh, independent sector, it's sort of like a national nonprofit organization. And they set, I think the volunteer rate for uh, Montana right now is 28 something an hour. Um, and so you can kind of choose something as a base rate, but often people's time is worth more, especially if you're working with a fisheries biologist or something. So my, my biggest advice on this is just consider what you would have to pay this person to do this work if you were paying them as a contractor, right? How much would that be? And so, and it's it's not minimum wage, even somebody planting willow stakes, if you're paying them as a contractor, that's gonna be more than minimum wage. Um, so if you wanna make it easy, you know, you can just say, you know, $27, $28 an hour for everybody, but you can also actually charge more for people who have more expertise. Um, and one quick thing that I like to point out is, um, even if you're having an educational event and people are showing up to that event, they're not like helping you put it on. They're not volunteering for you. They're just coming to an event um, or coming to a, a meeting. You know, if you're meeting with a landowner about doing something for their property, that time, that's still their time. So you can count that. Um, even if it's, you know, a teacher coming to an event or something, they're still contributing their time. Questions about that? Well, congratulations, because that is the hardest part of this webinar. <laughs> and you'll probably have more questions come up. Um, Tess or Jess, did you want to add anything to that specifically? Or you want to just wait till the end for any, any? And you don't have to. Yeah, I think that about covers it. Um, it is confusing, but if you can apply a monetary value to it, it's match. It's kind of a good rule of thumb, but yeah. that covers it. Yeah, yeah. And most of you will have more than enough match. I mean, you will have so much match, you don't know what to do with it if you actually track it. Um, this is that webinar that I was telling you about, um, in addition to the recording and the slides and all that. Christine was kindly shared us this match tracking worksheet that she uses that I'm gonna share with you all after this um, is really helpful for tracking that. Then tracking everything else, um, we kind of have already gone through this, right? It's those, activities, deliverables, everything you're going to cut and paste into your MOU and then say what you've done and where you're at with it. Um, I shared that spreadsheet with you all. It is not perfect. I, I just didn't have the time to, to make it perfect. But I think if you take that spreadsheet and, you know, if you have, you know, three activities, break that up into three separate rows, and then you can just write like, here's what, you know, just keep track whenever something happens with that, especially your deliverables, you know, have a, Keep track of every time somebody signs up as a volunteer. Just, just look through those in advance and just be tracking them as you go. Um, because if you track everything as you go, it's really pretty simple. You just go back to your spreadsheet and you're like, oh, this is what I've done. You put it in your report. If not, you will probably cry. Um, <laughs> I don't know if Chess or Tess tracked right from the beginning, um, but it's certainly 
a lot if you have to go back and try to remember or figure out everything that you did. And now I think our pretty much last thing before we talk with Jess and Tess is a couple of good reporting examples. Um, one is from Tess, and I do want to point out that these are everybody, these are their final reports. Um, you know, maybe your interim report will be perfect. That would be fantastic. If it's not, um, I'll give you, I mean, I'll give you feedback either way, and I'll let you know, like, hey, I didn't understand this part. What's going on here? You know, I'll ask questions. And that is with the idea of making your final report great because your final report is going to come like, you know, 10 days before you're done with your term. You just want it to be done. You don't want to have to be like <laughs> updating things at the very end. So, you know, the idea behind your interim report is to be your first grant report, figure all that out. So the final report. So um, these are some really great examples. And we'll start with a couple things from Tess. Tess is, these are the instructions. It shows up a little weird when you download it as a PDF. These are those metrics I was talking about. Um, these are slightly different from the ones this year, mainly the order of things, a couple of the questions are different, but they're they're more or less the same. But if you ever have a specific question about how you should do something, definitely refer to the instructions in the actual reporting forms, because um, these might be slightly different. Because every year I'm like, okay, what is the one thing that everyone, like everyone didn't understand and how can I make that more clear? So hopefully this year's instructions are better than last year's. So you can see Tess just did this thing. She cut and pasted, develop quarterly newsletters. That was right, that was the activity, short and sweet. Wrote a monthly newsletter beginning in March, everything, right? She just, and, and again, this is not long. It's just, here's what I did. Um, develop monthly blog posts, over 10 blog posts, right? So each thing is on here. Again, if you can put a, put a space, I'll be forever happy, but it's not required. Um, and I'd like, especially this, right, Tess, let me get <laughs> Like, whoa, okay, activity five, and then there's like, or no, six, and then there's all these like sub thing, like here, all that just, right, it's just, a, it's just a lot of stuff, so spaces are always great, um, but yeah, bulleted list, numbered list, whatever works for you, um, but literally just under each thing, be like, here's what I did, um, and honestly, Tess, you know, you're one of those people who's like super detail-oriented, and which is great, I, I really appreciate that, I'd rather have more information than less, right? But you know, but you don't you don't actually have to write a book like this. Um, just you know, get to the basics. Um, deliverables. Um, some yeah, you'll have varying deliverables, but like um, you know, number of new letters produced. Their goal was four. Tess actually did ten. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes your host site supervisor is like they're going to do eight of these, and you only do six, and it's okay because you probably did more of something else. If it's going to be huge, like. Uh, you know, we said we were going to do 10 and I only did one. Reach out to me before we get to that point. Let me know why you're going to be doing a ton less of this. But in general, you know, you're just wanting to get that task done. The goal of this is that you did education and outreach, right? And like you had some impacts in that. So your activities and deliverables will shift. If they shift a little, it's no big deal. And then same thing, Gallon Stream Teams, and we go on to all of those. I don't think um oh the in-kind match descriptions oh yeah i wanted to point out on here an important thing with match is that you don't have to have match for every task um like for test she had no match for task one she, she probably did but she just didn't record it <laughs> um and no match for task two but when we get down to task three right she's got all her funding sources and it was more than enough right um Volunteer in-kind time, she had 91 volunteers, 28.54 an hour, times two hours for that event. That was over $5,000. That was almost her entire match for the whole grant right there. And then she also had a river cleanup. Um, so volunteer in-kind time, 150 volunteers, the same, she just used that across the board, which is the easy thing to do, 28.54. Another two hours, 8,500. So right here, this is more than enough match for her entire grant. So it's okay that she doesn't have grant match for tasks one and two. I just wanted to make, make sure I pointed that out. And then very briefly, we're gonna look at Jessica's. Jessica worked for the Sun River Watershed Group and the Lewis and Clark Conservation District um, last year. Very similar, um, you know, she didn't do the numbers, but she did the bullets. She, you know, more or less said like, this is, here's the task or sorry, here's the activity. Here's what I did under the activity. Here's the deliverable, like 75 stakeholders engaged was their goal. 
However, only 45 stakeholders engaged. That's fine. We just want to know what you actually did, right? I don't want you to lie or exaggerate. Just do what you actually did. Um, 30 rain barrels, they did do that. You know, they had fewer participants, but they still got 30 rain barrels out there. Um, same thing, she had no match for that particular task, but she had enough for her other tasks. The main thing I want to point out on Jessica's is in her task three, all her activities. So she, you know, writes down all the activities she actually completed, but then she actually has this new member activity at, right? So she ended up doing something that she didn't expect to do, but it still fell under this task, which I don't remember that is, what that is. Oh, education and outreach. And so this is a willow cutting, but vol any volunteer event, we also consider education and outreach, right? Because those volunteers are learning something. So if you have that, just put new member activity added and add it to that. And then also she has further down here, cancel, right? So we were planning to do this thing. It didn't happen. And here's why. It was canceled for 2022. The school did not have enough chaperones to assist the day of the event. That's it. That's all I need to know. So don't just say like, we didn't do it. Just briefly tell me why. Um, and again, she added some new drill articles. I did this instead. Um, so just wanted to point that out on hers. I will share both of these with you all in an email today or tomorrow. And I think this is the last thing for me. Yeah. Now, unless anyone had any questions before I, I turn it over to Jess and Tess. Okay, go ahead. So yeah, I've just, just had these like questions that I put together that I thought would be helpful, especially focusing on, you know, that first and, and second one. If you, if you want to touch on how this is helping you in your current job too, that's great. Oh, Emily, I see your mic's off. Did you have a question before we answer these? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm assuming, but I don't want to assume that Jess and Tess and Terry will all be available by your contact if we have any like major questions during this clarification i mean maybe just but me i'm the main person you want to reach out to it's not okay. it is not tess and jess's job i mean maybe they would <laughs> talk to you <laughs> um you know especially especially for Allie. um yeah but but yeah i mean i i'm the one you should reach out to because i'm i'm the okay. one to do this yeah don't bug jess wonderful stay Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'll have Thank my you. contact information is going to be on the last slide and I'll share that too. Great question though. Yes. Reach out to me anytime. Sure. Well, I can take it away first, Jess, if that's good with you. Cool. So um, yeah, just to follow up on that, Emily, and for everyone else, Terry is a really great resource. And yeah, she does a great job at making herself accessible for when you do have those questions and need to talk through if you have changes in your deliverables and that sort of stuff. So yeah, thank you from my point of view of always being a good um, resource. But in terms of what I wish I would have known before I started working on this grant, um, or so for this reporting, it's a little different from the MCC monthly reporting. And this is just a helpful note of for MCC, I'm sure as they've gone over it, you report on only what your hands have done. So it's like, oh, if you're at a river cleanup, you only clean up a hundred feet with your physical person. Um, for the cost share reporting, you can count every volunteer that was at that event. So that's kind of a difference of the two things you'll have to report on this year to keep um, a mind on of, yeah, you can include everyone at an event through this reporting, but not through your MCC reporting. Um, and then also, yeah, I just wish I would have known the more creative ways to find match, which I'm glad that uh, so many were provided and of, yeah, different food that people have donated and in terms of match, uh, yeah, if you're not comfortable asking a contractor how much they charge for their wage, yeah, defaulting to the volunteer wage is good. And also on that federal page where they list, um, I'm trying to think of what actual website it is, but you can look up um, what laborers charge in general. So yeah, if you don't wanna ask someone how much they make, there's like an estimation within that webpage. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, and I think it's actually the exact same 
rates as last year as what you have. It, I, you haven't seen it change yet. So it'll just, yeah, it's that 2854. Jesse, do you want to chime in on that or should we go back and forth? <laughs> no, back and forth works. <laughs> uh, so yeah, to reiterate, Terry is a great resource. Please use her. I don't, but I should just have her on speed dial at this point for all of the work that we do with Watershed Coordination Council. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate tracking, I know it feels like we're like beating you with that, but it really is so important. And just like something that I did, which was a mistake, was I had all these different grants, all these different things that I had to track, MCC. So I had it all in one spreadsheet. But then that really kind of came back and bit me when I was having to cherry pick everything. Um, so just keep it separate. It might be one extra step to have to record things in more than one place, but it's going to help you come recording time. Um, because I had to then go through all of our volunteers and figure out, oh, which ones actually helped with non-point source versus which ones were doing other projects. Versus we had some like forest service employees helping, which we could track for some things, but not for this grant. So just keep it all separate. It's going to maybe suck in the moment to have so many spreadsheets, but come reporting time, your, your job will be so much easier. Um, and then same with just like saving any like receipts, photos or whatever, just keep them in several places. That way you're not digging through all of your Dropbox folders or wherever you save your files at the end of the day. Um, yeah, just make yourself easy, put it in one place even if it means saving it several times, I think would be my biggest takeaway. Yeah, and th just to jump in, thank you both for mentioning that and like that this is different from the MCC reporting, right? And this is sort of like the world of nonprofits where you're gonna, like if you if you decide to continue with a nonprofit organization or a conservation district, you will, you will have these multiple grants and you will, you know, and so you're just gonna have, and unfortunately we have not all, everyone in the world gotten it together to have the exact, you track the exact same things, you're always gonna have to track different things. So yeah, thanks for that, both of you. Then I can, yes, answer the second question, which was uh, how did managing reporting on this grant help you with your current job? And yeah, just following up on what Terry just said, if you choose to stay in the nonprofit sector, there's there are always grants to apply for and to achieve your deliverables. So it's like, yeah, you're getting the funding to do what you're going to, what you said that you're going to do. And yeah, just checking in on that and even structuring, which I know you, we have a core member this year at GWC, but as you're creating your work plans, when you do have these grants, it helps structure those. And even now as a staff member, I've had to go through and yeah, look at deliverables and then create a work plan. Um, continuing even past my AmeriCorps term. And also at the end of the year, it's a great way to be like, hey, here's my resume. This is everything I did this year um, when you're going out and looking for a job. Yeah, I agree. Good point with the resume, being able to actually put numbers. That's a good point. Um, and yeah, just kind of to reiterate, if you're going to be doing grants in the future, which you probably will if you stay in this field, it just is a really good learning opportunity. Um, you might be like cursing your supervisor right now for making you do this, but it's a great introduction to grant, grant management. Um, and again, Terry is a good resource, resource. Your supervisors will know what's going on. It's kind of a good way to dip your toe into this grant world, which you'll probably be in for a while if you stay in the field. <laughs> Sweet. And then, yeah, the last one that we had was what was the most valuable thing that we learned? Yeah. Reaching out to Terry as a resource definitely, yeah, makes makes everything easier when you're stuck and need help. Um, also, your host supervisor should have some experience with this. But yeah, they're always bouncing off of um, others for insight. And then, yeah, just keeping track of your metrics. And I like to include a short description of, oh, educational event and what I actually talked about. So you could look back and be like, oh, this was non-point source related rather than it happened in May and now it's November. And you're like, I have no idea what occurred <laughs> of just, yeah, reminding yourself what you did and what happened. Yeah, I don't know if there's much more to add to that. That was perfectly said, but it's a great learning opportunity. Um, 
you will, if you are not an organized person, you will become one thanks to this grant um, or any grant. So it's a good way to really, again, just kind of dip your toe in and start learning about this different kind of management and all the different reporting that goes on um, in your groups, especially because I know many of you work for nonprofits. Everything comes down to tracking and metrics. It will only make you a stronger member of your team. Thanks about that. Yeah, this just went this just went longer than I thought it was going to. I'm gonna go back to um the slides just so I can go to the the last one with my contact information. I mean, hopefully you all have received the email from me, so you should have this already, but um just to reiterate. And again, you know, pointing out like we're acknowledging our funders here, right? D we got this funding from EPA and DEQ. So I put this on the slide to be like, hey. Thanks for giving us this funding, right? So that we can um, hopefully help you all out here. Not a ton, I'm actually happy to stay on a little longer. I don't want anybody to feel they need to stay on longer because we have gone pretty much up to time. Um, but if you do have more questions, I'm happy to stay on longer. But regardless, we have a few minutes. Um, and aside from, oh, making sure I thank Jess and Tess again for being on here. You all were super helpful, not just being here, but in the lead up to this, I sent them my slides and was like, hey, what what should I focus on? And, you know, it was really good to get the perspectives. Additional questions? Or thoughts, advice, anything? Well, just from, uh grant writer's perspective, I really like Submittable. I think it's a really user-friendly platform and, and a lot of folks are using it now. So it's also a, a great way to learn a, a really common grant writing platform, so. Yeah, and you'll see this wasn't the case with Gallatin River Task Force, but a lot of times, um, because again, other organizations and agencies are using this now too. You might see your host site has other grants in there too, besides from MWCC. All right. Well, maybe we're good. Um, I feel like the one I will stop my screen share one last time so we can all see one another properly. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate, I'm here. But also, I mean, if you have specific questions about what you're working on, probably your, you know, your host site supervisor is going to be your first person. That's the person who worked. Tracy, Jess, um, Susan, it was, it was a little bit more Britta and, and Sarah working on this, but I, you're pretty in the loop on this. Um, you know, your host site supervisor is the one who worked with me to like finalize this scope of work. And so they know, like they know all these things you're supposed to be doing. And so they're really your first person to reach out to. They'll be working with you on this stuff anyway. Um, but if there's something that you can't answer together, I'm available anytime. Um, reach out to me. One quick thing I want to say, I'll probably say this in a few other formats, but I am going to be taking a nine-week sabbatical all of June and July. No, right? Um, hoping that more small nonprofits can do the same going forward. Um, so that's going to be, I'm basically going to be on all of June and July, which is going to be different this year, because for those of you who don't know, MWCC has two full-time employees and one person who works for us 10 hours a week. So um, Megan Gilmore, I'll send you all this in May, you'll get all this information, but there will be somebody available to answer your questions in June and July too. Um, but I just wanted to let you all know that I will not be around in June and July. That's why your reports are due in May, um, <laughs> a little earlier than last year so that I can, you know, be around for that and for all of that. Um, but yeah, you'll know all of that in, in May. I'll let you know who's, who's around during those summer months. And I believe that's it. I will see all the members at your education and outreach training. Um, and again, I know this was a lot, but you'll have the recording. You'll I will send you the slides. I will send you Christine. I will send you all of the things in a, in a giant email in the next couple of days. So you'll have that to refer back to. But yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, it is, you know, I am here as a resource, not just as a grant manager, but like MWCC, that is what we do. We support local watershed conservation um, and we support the Big Sky Watershed Corps program. And so that means supporting all of your work, um, both professionally and, you know, what you're doing as an individual as well as what your site is doing. So, all right, I'm going to assume, I'm going to give us a pause in case there's anything else. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for being here. And uh, yeah, great to see you all. And I'll see most of you next week. Thank you.
Bye. Have a great term and have an awesome sabbatical. Oh, yeah, I will. <laughs> Bye. Everybody.